You now say it's just got real. How real? Can I get it on the street when I'm using not just Apple, but LG, whether I'm using a Samsung phone? What's it going to feel like? The short answer is yes. Uh, we have been building this for over two, three years, and uh, we have been planning to have, first of all, we have the best 4G network in the nation, which we always rely on. Then we do nationwide 5G, as you mentioned. More than 200 million people can access it in 1,800 cities. On top of that, we have the transformative uh, 5G ultra wideband in uh, 55 cities, 60 cities by year end, where you know it's an unparalleled performance on speed, capacity, and latency. So of course, now it's getting real because uh, we have been waiting for an iPhone. The penetration of uh, iPhone user in the US is very high and uh, that's why now I can think that uh, we are really in that moment of 5G just got real. And uh, we think it's great that uh, all the phones that uh, Apple are launching have the uh, ultra wideband chipset in them so they can really access the really high performance from Verizon. And so with regards to the technology, the hardware on your end, on Verizon's end, making sure that those millions of new iPhone customers, of 5G iPhone customers, not only have access to 5G, but how stable is that 5G service going to be for those folks who are using it? No, it's going to be very stable. I mean, first of all, we are, have super quality in our network. We've always had that. We don't launch anything that is uh, half-baked and not working. And of course, together with uh, such a prime partner as Apple, we both have sort of high quality as our main standard in everything we do for our customers. So you, you should rely on Verizon and Apple. We, we're going to have a fantastic performance on these phones when they're coming out to the market. So this has been a work on technology and commercials over a year, uh, so we are excited of this moment uh, for our consumers but also for our business users users to get the opportunity to, to get the real 5g 60 cities by year end sounds great except all of my friends just left the cities to move to the suburbs because they're in the middle of a pandemic when do the suburban and rural cities and those communities get 5g yeah, as I said, we are also doing a nationwide 5G today, and we already have the best 4G. So we are actually covering more than 200 million uh, of the population in the United States uh, today. So uh, that's coming now, and that's why I said I've been waiting for this moment uh, all the year. I told the market that we're going to launch nationwide at the right commercial moment. This is the right commercial moment. We have the nationwide, we have the ultra wideband, and we have the best 4G network. This is something we want to give our customers. So this is an exciting time for us. This has been a work in years together with our partners to get where we are and we have been driving the ecosystem in front of us and some think that we are late on, on, on 5G. I would say we are two years ahead of the plans that were five years ago where 5G should be today. So I think we have pushed the envelope here in the United States and we're very proud of it. It's interesting that Verizon and AT&T are actually offering sort of amid this hope for a huge upgrade cycle free access to these phones if of course you go on to the more unlimited provisions that you offer in terms of access. I'm interested in who's going to be buying these phones. As Taylor mentioned, we're in the middle of a pandemic, we're in the middle of an economic crisis as well, Hans. How affordable, how realistic is the super cycle amidst Apple's new phone? Yeah, that's of course, uh, we are in a very tough situation with the pandemic and the economical downturn and all of that. But uh, clearly we have seen a, a lot of uh, sort of excitement around the 5G phone from, from Apple. So we're going to see, we are geared up to receive all the demand there is and seeing that the network is perfect for actually using it. And that's what we're going to see the next couple of weeks here when the offering is coming out and the, the phones can be delivered. But I have a... Personally, at least, I believe that many people would really get, would love to get the 5G phone from Apple on the Verizon network. And so going forward here, Hans, in terms of building out uh, not only 5G capabilities, but of course just the general capabilities that Verizon needs to keep uh, this increasing number of customers happy, uh, what type of CapEx spend increase, if any, uh, should investors expect to see? If you look what we did in the beginning of the year, uh, when we came into the pandemic, I think the second week when it started hitting in the US, we decided to increase the CAPEX guidance for this year. We thought it was the right thing to invest more in the market, and we didn't know uh, how the usage would be on our wireless network, so that's why we did it. Now the network has held up very well, but we still continue to deploy the capital that we decided to increase in the beginning of the year. We think it's right for the nation, it's right for our customers. So that's why we Then we will come back, what we'll have a guidance for the next years to come, but right now we have increased our guidance that we did in, in the beginning of the year. 
can you give us a sense of how you will fund via debt, perhaps, uh, uh, to make those investments? I think if you look at our balance sheet, I mean, uh, remember, I'm only two weeks out from my uh, yeah. earnings call, but when we had our sec our, our second quarter reporting, we, for the first time, hit the uh, financial metrics pre-Vodafone uh, acquisition on our balance sheet. A terrific job of our, of our treasure team over the years, coming down to around two times our EBITDA. That's just uh, in net debt. That's just fantastic. At the same time, in this quarter, we offered and we did our second green bond for one one billion US dollar, continue to think about the climate change in the country, and one of few companies in the telecom sector actually investing uh, our debt into uh, climate change. So, uh, and this is the second one, because the first one we did 2019, and we already exhausted the first billion, and now we're going to the second billion. So I have to say my treasure team is doing great uh, work in order to position our balance sheet as strong as they need to be. Hans, before you join Verizon when you're on the tech side of Verizon then becoming the CEO. Prior to that, of course, we go back when you used to be leading Ericsson, a company that is all about infrastructure at its very heart and all about providing global access. It was big in China, for example. You know U.S. markets versus the rest of the world. How much do you think the U.S. is competitive with its 5G rollout versus other China? Is it, is it neck and neck? Can it make up some of the lost ground, do you think? U.S. is actually leading and has been done that for a long time. I mean, we were first with the 5G home, we were first with 5G mobile edge compute, we were first with a 5G uh, commercial 5G smartphone, and uh, we see the deployments are going on in the U.S. and now with the iPhone. I think we're clearly leading in the, in the, in the 5G world, and I'm, I'm proud of what we have done in Verizon, but also the rest of the industry is doing there. I mean, there's a lot of other companies uh, in the ecosystem that are doing their work. So I feel good about it, and uh, I think we're in the lead. Hans, I want to get your thoughts, I guess, on the other end of the spectrum, the value sort of side uh, of the business right now. Uh, obviously, you just had that announcement, I guess, about a month ago uh, to buy track phone. I'm wondering with regards to folks who maybe either don't need uh, the best 5G or don't can't afford it here. Um, what is that customer base right now? Is it growing? And are there any other sort of moves that you're planning uh, to maybe capture some more of those customers? So we have, uh, for the last uh, two, three years, worked uh, on the Verizon brand with our unlimited offering, where we have uh, sort of different layers of it, and we actually reduced our uh, lowest tier for unlimited to see that our customer that has a metered plan can actually come into unlimited and move their way up as they uh, see it's important for them to get experience, new features, and if they go high up, they get Disney Plus included, they get Apple Music included. So we have created a range of unlimited limited together uh, in order for our customers to pick and choose what is really right for them. When it comes to the track phone that we announced that we are, are uh, planning to acquire, that's another segment of the market, a value segment that we're going to continue to nurture. There's a, good, it's a big group of customers that want to have prepaid and using that as well. So it fits very well in for us to be actually playing in the whole segment uh, and seeing that whatever customer wants, wants from us, we will have it with the best network as a foundation.